Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 9 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is an illustration of an investment procedure, which is a procedure in which stents are not placed, but instead balloon angioplasty is performed, and then stents are placed at the second time when the patient returns for repeat angiography. The patient had a mid-right coronary artery CTO. There was an acute marginal branch originating at the proximal cap. The lesion length was about 40 millimeters, and there was a good quality distal vessel, although very distally, the size of the vessel was fairly small. The posterior lateral was filling via an epicardial collateral, which was tortuous and of small caliber, and it was unclear if the septal collaterals did reach all the way to the very small PDA. In the array of view, we see the same characteristics. There is an ambiguous proximal cap, good quality distal vessel. There is also a very large early conus branch that courses all the way to the inferior wall and essentially acts as a second PDA. So in summary, we have a patient with an RCA CTO. It's an ambiguous proximal cap, 40 millimeters length, good quality distal vessel, and epicardial collateral from the circumflex. And as a result, our plan was to perform undergrade wire escalation in multiple views to sort out the ambiguity. If the wire went subintimal, proceed with dissection reentry and leave retrograde as a third option. We perform multiple projections, and in the area of view, there appear to be potentially a micro channel coursing through the occlusion. We're able to advance a wire partially in the occlusion, and then we're able to advance a cross post catheter, which did cross, however, it went in the subintimal space in the mid right coronary artery. This was changed for a stingray wire that was done over a Miracle 12 that provides good support. And then we initially attempted re entry into the vertical part of the right coronary artery in an attempt to minimize the dissection length. However, re-entry is harder in this territory, and as can be seen from the contralateral injection, the uh, wire, which is a pilot, one, uh, pilot 200 wire that was used to swap for the stingray wire, is in an acute marginal branch. So we advanced further down, that's called bobsled, and attempted re-entry in the vertical part of the right coronary artery. We performed the stingray wire, and the stingray actually went into the distal true lumen, as shown in this view, as well as an orthogonal array of view. So we have successful re-entry into the distal true lumen. However, unfortunately, during attempts to remove the stingray balloon, we lost wire position, which is a significant problem, as you can imagine, because then we had significant difficulty re-entering. The patient now is developing a subintimal hematoma in the distal right coronary, which made re-entry very hard. After multiple attempts, we were actually unable to re-enter. We did a brief attempt for retrograde crossing through septal collaterals, but there was no connection. And then, in the end, we performed the STAR technique in which a filter XT was advanced with the loop at the tip all the way to the small posterior descending artery. This is an area to be extremely careful because those small arteries can perforate. And then we did not put any stents, but instead we performed balloon angioplasty because we did not want to lose several of those branches, including this very large right posterior lateral branch. After balloon angioplasty, there is undergrade flow all the way to the PDA and the PLV. However, there are significant dissections in the entire length of the right coronary artery. So we did not place stents. However, the patient came back three months later, and now there was a channel that he had formed within the dissection planes. This was easily wired with a workhorse guide wire, and after placing several stents, we did have TM3 flow to the LAD, to the right coronary artery. So in summary, there are several lessons from this case. The first one is to be extremely careful with losing wire position. This case could have been successfully completed the first time had we been a little more careful during the removal of the stingray balloon. Very, very important to have meticulous attention to wire position and to use the trapping technique to ensure that the wire remains in the right place. Actually, since that case, we have always been using long wires, long stingray, and long pilot 200 
because sometimes uh, there is some difficulty with the trapping technique coming back. The second lesson is that when uh, re-entry fails and we have re-entry but very very distal in the vessel, which would mean losing several of the side branches if stents are placed, it is best to not put stents during the original procedure. Instead, let the dissections heal and bring the patient back in one to two or three months and then stand the patient, at, w at which time there is a recanalization of the lumen and stenting can be done without compromising the patency of the side branches. This is what is an investment procedure, which is um, a useful approach. It is best to not stand immediately if there is extensive dissections all the way very distal to the vessel, but instead defer it for the future. Thank you very much.